Hi, I'm Dr. Jenny Davis, and I'm here to tell you about the concept of affordance. I'll also introduce an operational model of affordance called the Mechanisms and Conditions Framework. Affordances are how the features of a technology, its technical specifications, affect that technology's functions, how the technology enables and constrains. This applies to both technical capacities, what one can do with the technology, and also social effects, what the technology does with us. Affordance was first introduced by the ecological psychologist J.J. Gibson in the 1960s, and then brought to the fields of design and human-computer interaction by Don Norman in the late 1980s. The use of affordance has become widespread across scholarly disciplines and even outside of them, picking up considerable steam as thinkers work to understand digitization and now automation in everyday life. With its rise and spread, two problems have become apparent, a binary application and a presumed, often unnamed, universal subject. In other words, people treat affordances as either present or absent, with effects that are either inevitable or impossible, while treating technologies as though they operate the same way for all people in all places at all times. Intuitively, that seems wrong. How might we do better? In my book, How Artifacts Afford, The Power and Politics of Everyday Things, I introduce the Mechanisms and Conditions Framework. This framework turns the concept of affordance into an operational model, one that shifts the orienting question from what technologies afford to how technologies afford, for whom, and under what circumstances. The Mechanisms and Conditions Framework has two parts the mechanisms, which is the how, and the conditions, which is the for whom and under what circumstances. The mechanisms of affordance indicate that a technology enables and constrains with varying degrees of insistence. It doesn't just afford or not, but requests, demands, encourages, discourages, refuses, and allows social action. These are conditioned on three interrelated factors. Perception, a user's awareness of a technology's functions, dexterity, how skilled and able someone is to operate the technology, and cultural and institutional legitimacy, how much social support someone has in a technology's use. These conditions help us identify the ways technologies afford differently for different people across a range of situations. What the technology requests of one person, it may demand of another. What is here and now allowed may be there and then refused. For example, push notifications don't make me check my social media accounts, but they do request my attention and encourage me to interact with networks online. They also may discourage concentrated attention on the tasks and people in front of me. I can mitigate these requests by turning off notifications or silencing my phone. That is, the interface allows me to adjust the force of social media's call. However, if I don't realize that notifications can be disabled, I don't perceive this functionality, or if I don't know which buttons to push, I lack the skill or dexterity, then for me, those options are refused. They may also be refused, or at least strongly discouraged, if, for instance, the conditions of my employment require me to be always available and quickly responsive. In such a case, I may know how to turn off notifications, but don't have the support or cultural and institutional legitimacy to do so. The Mechanisms and Conditions Framework serves as a tool of both analysis and design. Analysts can use the framework to specify what is, while developers and designers imagine and build what could be. In both cases, the model provides a shared and transferable vocabulary that anchors and clarifies the dynamic relationship between people and things in a complex social world. Want more? Check out my book, How Artifacts Afford, The Power and Politics of Everyday Things. The introduction and table of contents are free online from MIT Press.